people treat you the exact way that you train them to uh, treat you. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is if, if I'm meeting the president of the United States, for example, whether I agree with him politically or any other way, regardless, there's going to be a certain amount of decorum that I'm going to be expected to show uh, to the president when I'm meeting them. We would all agree with that, right? If you work a job and you are having a meeting with your boss, whether you're in the right, they're in the right, that's irrelevant, right? When you have a meeting with somebody who is in a position of authority or a position of uh, prominence, then there's a, a certain type of way that you treat that person, right? A lot of people will treat people differently based on the position that they hold in society or the um, relevance that they believe that they have to, to them personally. And this is absolutely true when it comes to uh, dealing with a narcissist. I, if I'm the boss, if I'm a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, I'm the one who determines the culture for that community, right? If I am the parent in a household, right? If I'm a spouse in a relationship, whatever, whatever is going on in my life, I am choosing to set the tone of the culture for that place. A lot of people will say, what about when the narcissist doesn't participate? I've told them, don't treat me that way. I've told them, don't speak to me that way. I've tried to set these things up. I have an entire section in here on boundaries where I discuss the difference between a boundary and a suggestion. Um, but long story short, that was a choice that you made because a lot of people don't understand how trained, how the trauma bond has actually trained their brain to excuse certain behavior that they would never allow from somebody else in another situation, in any other form. So let's take that out of the equation for a moment. Um, Let's say you're with a friend at lunch or you're with your mom doing something and they make a comment to you that is inappropriate or off-putting. I'm sure you would tell them, well, let me say this. Let me not say I'm sure you would tell them. A healthy person would say, that's an appropriate way to speak to me. I won't be tolerated to, to be treated that way. And let it go, right? And we'll move on. Oh, and a healthy person in that situation would respond, I'm so sorry, I had no idea or whatever, right? And maybe they did have an idea. Maybe they're going to take responsibility and say, you know what, that's actually a reflection of something that I'm going through. I'm sorry for taking it out on. When you have an unhealthy mindset, when it comes to your own self-worth, you will allow these patterns of behavior to continuously repeat. And I've heard every excuse in the book, you know, um, I can't say anything back to my parents because I want to honor them or they're just too old or, um, well, my best friend has always been that way or whatever it is, right? Or I don't want to say something because it's going to make it worse. I've heard every single excuse you could possibly think of over the past almost six years that I've been doing this. And what it all comes down to though, is the failure to recognize that you are a magnet, right? When you have decided that's okay, you will get more of that back. This is a spiritual law. This is a spiritual principle. You cannot uh, negate it. And so for those reasons, we, we really need to be paying attention to what we are thinking about ourselves first, right? Because if I had the right mindset, if I had a healthy mindset, um, if I had a healthy self-esteem, a good identity, uh, an understanding of my true worth and value, there would be no way that I would tolerate that. I, I will simply remove myself from the situation. You don't have to, it does not have to be this big production of, I'm going to say this and I'm going to take, you know, so-and-so with me. You know, people who want to be in your life will naturally understand, okay, that's the way this person wants to be treated. I'm going to treat them that way because I want them in my life, or they're going to decide they're just not a good victim for me, right? If, if I'm an abuser, 
I'm only going to be wanting to hang around with people who are afraid to speak up to me, who are um, uh, willing to let me continuously push the bounds of what is acceptable so that by the time I go back to the first or second thing, right? If, I, if, if abuse is a ladder, which it is, it's a never ending ladder. And I start at the first step and it's like, hey, that's not acceptable, but you don't do anything about it. I'm going to see what the next step is. And when you don't do anything about that, I'm going to continue on and on and on. I will always increase the abuse. I'm an abuser. That's what I do. That's how you need to understand what is happening to you. If you are a victim, you will continuously allow that to happen. The moment that you realize, hey, if I wasn't a victim, this wouldn't be happening, right? You can be a target and not a victim. And I've mentioned that many, many, many times before. 